I don't know how late to the party I am for this particular game because I don't think it came out a couple weeks. Yeah, I don't think it came ago. out that that long ago. But I feel it feels like I'm late to the party because um, I don't really like the Wii that much, so I don't play it that often. But I did. I got a copy of uh, Koro Rinpa. <laughs> It's actually really fun. Uh, the short of it is that it's like um, Super Monkey Ball, except for you can control the entire world. You, you don't, you can't just tilt it like you know, 60 degrees or whatever. You can tilt it all the way around. The nicest thing is that it has one-to-one -one control with the Wiimote. So, you know, when you tip the thing upside down like this, the entire world is spun upside down. So sometimes you'll have to twist the controller at a weird angle and then navigate a space very carefully, uh, like a piece of narrow road or whatever, while you're holding it at this funny angle. And then, you know, all of a sudden the road twists again. And so you're now you're holding it completely upside down and still twisting. I don't know, it just seems like the, the most um, intuitive use of the Wii Remote, but in a way that actually affects the game and makes it more fun. There's not that like huge frustration that you would get in Monkey Ball with also the, the added uh, like sensitivity of the Wii mode. You get to choose different balls that have different properties. And it's not oh. just like Monkey Ball where there's like four balls. This one there's like 20 or something like that. And you know, some bounce a little bit more and some stick to the ground a little bit more. <laughs> Hard, it's because the level design is hard and like you're looking at it and you're like no this is like really freaking hard right here right if you're starting up here and you need to get down here you may have to grab a bunch of crystals along the way but let's say you've done that and you fall off the edge well if there's not usually there's checkpoints and they're well placed so you know mm -hmm. you, you don't get frustrated that's one thing that keeps the frustration down but it's nice to be able to like hop to the end of a stage by you know popping off the edge and like twisting back and just barely catching yourself on some right. edge and you know I don't know it's like it feels like uh, there's just all these little places where you can like warp around by um, by fucking around with the game. I don't know if you like Monkey Ball. It's like Monkey Ball Plus. I didn't think I would enjoy it, and I ended up with a copy, and it's like <laughs> my favorite thing on the Wii so far. It's just one of those games that you just don't think it's going to be that interesting, but I mean, I sat down with it and had a great time. It's a very niche little Japanese game you guys probably haven't heard of. I haven't played a Final Fantasy. I used to be a huge fan, but I kind of stopped playing them uh, at 9. You know, I was so busy with games over the over the fall and so busy with work and stuff, and then I just happened to have time over a weekend, I got 12. A leader of the resistance has fallen into Imperial hands. A woman by the name of Amalia. I would rescue her, but I need your help. This resistance leader, this Amalia, she must be very important. I mean, I was just like completely blown away. like sucked completely back into an RPG I which uh, you know and I, I played and really enjoyed Blue Dragon is probably the last RPG I enjoyed before it but even Blue Dragon which I would play you know it has a lot of grinding I would play on my TV and do the split screen and like watch another show uh, on the other screen while I level grinded Blue Dragon and with Dragon Quest I did the same thing I'd read a magazine while I was level grinding Final Fantasy 12 like I noticed I absolutely there was not anything else I needed to do to ever distract me from it. <laughs> The graphics, I didn't want to ever shrink it down because like just running around the world, the graphics, even in the first city, and I'm still in the first third of the game, but I mean, there's just so many different creatures. The art direction is amazing. The cities really feel like these alive, vibrant cities, different parts of it. Like there's this, you know, underground part to the very first city has its own, you know, and the music helps, but it's its own total look and feel, its own vibe.
all the dungeons have these little like themes to them. It's, you know, there's one dungeon that these little creatures, these mimic creatures are sucking the power out of it. And when the, it gets dark, these zombies come up and attack. <laughs> Another level has this alarm that keeps going off and you have to either turn it off or the guards will come. Like the dungeons have something going on. <laughs> they developed so many different systems for you to develop your characters in different ways, you know, beyond just the the abilities and spells and that sort of thing, which is this really cool grid system. The whole gambit system that lets your characters run on their own, that's another thing that you're like building up. You're buying or finding the ability to basically program your your other characters to fight on their own. So you might, you might uh, find or buy the ability to um, cast a spell on somebody when their hit points are less than 80%. I mean, it, it sounds complicated and it is, but but it's uh, what you really need to know is it's another way of really like customizing and building up your characters. In Final Fantasy XII, you never go into battle. You're always in battle. You're just, just running around, you know, uh, things attack you and you can attack them and you can run away and they can be running away. You're never separated into, you know, and it loads and here's now you're in battle and then, okay, the battle's over and then you go on to the next thing. And now, like, even seeing RPGs like that, they, they feel so segmented. Those decrepit basking fools in Arcades tie my hands and look what happens. I tell you, this country's obstinacy knows no bounds. The insurgents in Rabanasta operate alone at present. However, should they garner external support, the situation could worsen. The overall translation in the story, like I forget that video games, it's like I feel like I'm reading like a novel after reading like children's books for so long. Even, you know, good games with good, well done translation and stories like Zelda, like they feel so light and fluffy after you get into something like this with like, there's all this political intrigue and you know, characters have have, uh, have really have their own voice and their own motivations and it's really subtly done a lot of times. The Rabanaster Imperial Guard appear to have overstepped their bounds. I intend to speak on this with the Consul. What? Vane Solidor, the Consul is my brother. The first duty of the Consul is to maintain order in Dalmasca. My brother... My brother is not one given to failure. Perhaps things aren't going as well as they might be, but give him a little time and he will put things to rights. Be not troubled. My brother is a remarkable man. In the camera, I'm surprised. I do have to say, like, my one big complaint, the camera is kind of screwed up, I think. You keep going against walls and it'll fly up and it goes around the other way and, like, I'm surprised, I don't remember it being that bad even in previous Final Fantasies, but I was shocked how it's bad. because you don't get to control the camera in previous Final Fantasies. They have like those Resident Evil style, you know, like pre-rendered background cameras. Oh yeah, you know? I guess you're right. Like, it was even on Final intent, Fantasy right? 10, I think is mostly like yeah. set cameras. So yeah, I found myself like totally sucked in all over again. And it's, you know, the sort of thing now where I'm just thinking about, always thinking about playing it and like when I'm gonna play it next. I recently had to review Command and Conquer 3 for Xbox 360, so I kind of like, and it made me appreciate Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2. No one's playing it with me, you know, it's easy to get friends to play Gears of War with you or Halo, but it's like, hey, who wants to play Battle for Middle Earth 2 with me? And it's like, crickets, right? And then, but I, I really like that game, like, I wanted to get back to it to get some achievements, and a lot of people, like, their first instinct is like, real-time strategy game on a console, and it's just too complicated, and then, but even in the old, PlayStation 1 and Saturn days where I could do the click and drag with your joypad, mm -hmm. I didn't really mind it. Like people were just like, oh, it sucks without a mouse, but I didn't mind it. And Lord of the Rings, they actually, and Command and Conquer, they had these simplified commands where you could select all, your entire army, you could do shortcuts, uh, you could select your heroes really quickly or your builder guys. So it's a, it's a really friendly control setup. But when they build those castles and the dwarven towns and the human towns, it looks so awesome because it's not just this generic tiled set of mountains and trees and you're just fighting on it, you actually feel like I, I have these little guys running around in these huge cities. When you build archers, you're not building one archer. It's not like Warcraft 2 days, you know, and you have to try and cl click on them, put your cursor on them, click on them. You build like a, a squad of archers. Right. So it's really easy to see what, what they're doing and like how they look is different. And sometimes you do have to zoom in a little bit. It's like, wait, are those my pikemen or are those my swordsmen? You do have to do that a little bit, but they do a pretty good 
great job of like in the animations and how they act. And the one reason I like Lord of the Rings better than Command and Conquer is it, I thought it's actually easier to move the guys around individually. Like Command and Conquer, you can have a two-man squad, and then it gets and they're, the units are actually smaller graphically than in Lord of the Rings. So it's actually easier if you if you do want to click on individual units, which you don't have to do that often. But if you do need to, it's actually better in Lord of the Rings. Once I got used to console controls, I, I like playing an environment because like it's like your classic, I, I get to be on my couch, I, used to, I can have this huge HD TV, and I could see what all my friends are doing on Xbox Live, and I could get achievements. Like, as silly as it is, like achievements make me want to play that version over the PC one. And even though the PC one has the expansion pack, I, it doesn't matter, I, I can't get achievements there, so I, I, I want to play the console one. Now I'm trying to go through and earn all my achievements, so my multiplayer achievements, and I'm, I'm finding a few people here and there, it's like, oh, you play Lord of the Rings? I, let's trade gamer tag and let's play because uh, it's it's hard to find competition because it's it's such a small niche genre on the consoles. some wrestlers uh, playing a video game against each other. It's pretty crazy. I'm gonna go try to talk some wrestlers and see how it goes. Hopefully I won't get my ass kicked. Whoa, 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 man. I haven't even started the interview and you're already scaring me. All right, sorry. All right, I'm here with uh, Mr. Kennedy. Kennedy. That was, my, that was my previous say that. All right, so I've been seeing you be doing a lot of like intense promos, so I, I kind of figure like, I wanna- hang on, hang on a second, hang on a second. Are you wearing? Hey, you like that? Are you yeah, wearing, yeah. Are you wearing pink? Huh? Dude, but pink is a girl's color. Yes, and uh. Somebody, wait, what? What? What do you? Wait. Elijah Burke with the Superstar Challenge coming up. What's your plan? 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 There's no plan. Plan? No plan. Yeah, I'm here with ECW champion uh, Bobby Lashley. So, um, in this THQ Superstar Challenge, I put down five hundred dollars on you. You better fucking win. You cover up the pink shirt. Oh yeah, okay. Cover it up. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. So, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Stay. sorry, sorry. Okay. Stay. Okay. Stay. Okay. Sit. Please don't hurt Good me. Good boy. Please don't hurt me. Oh, yada yada yada. Dude, I'm getting, I don't know about you. I'm getting kind of sleepy over here. You getting tired? Yeah, I'm getting tired. Kind of, it's going on and on, dude. It's on and on, Are you man. Bored? I'm not bored. You're a big dude, man. All right, so. The thing is, I've been working out too, so check these guns out, man. Check those out. Oh, what the? It's about the same. <laughs> Elijah, is there anything you can tell us about the lawsuit that's going on right now um, about you stealing Buckwheat's image? I don't have an afro. Ask me some stupid questions. Okay, so, um,. You're very intense, as I can see, and I, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe becoming a wrestler, so... Are you? Can you help me out with my promos? What would you be, like, one of the Lost Beatles? <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good one. Is that what you'd be? Uh, that's, yeah. That's, all right, so here, here, here's Gringo. my... Gringo? Here's, here, huh? here's my promo, all right. Hey, you guys! I'm gonna kick... That was horrible. That was... I was horrible. A little bored. Yeah, a little How bored. Old is this jacket? Yeah, sure. This is a pristine jacket. I don't just wear this every day. This, yeah, this know. looks like it's been hanging up in your closet for about ten years, next to your tie-dye T-shirts. You little hippie. Yeah. It's you bought it when you were eight. It was probably too small for you then, but now you fit in it, and you're yeah, twenty-four. Yeah, it's great, right? I like yeah, it. it. It sucked, man. When it's Did you iron this on? <laughs> no. Why does the tag say "Fruit of the Loom"? Write that down, right? Play it. I mean, that's just an idea. I mean, I, no, no disrespect. All right, so, uh, what it play, play on the middle of the I mean, Look at you, you got a pink pen, too. What? What's wrong with you? The last thing I heard, there was a lawsuit for gimmick infringement. You, uh, and the Red Rooster. 
could be. So I know you're a big gamer. Correct. Yeah, so I'm stuck in my DS game. I was wondering if you could uh, help me out. Where are you at? All right, so uh, you just got to kill the zombies, all right? Kill the zombies? Okay. Then you got to use the stylus. How do you... I've never played this game. Yeah, you just got to, you know, stick him with the... All right, yeah. so can you can you kill that boss? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get a drink, so I'll be right back, all right? Okay. Yeah, okay, so let's go, you go for him, right? Sweet. Did you pay for this? The haircut? I tried to pay for it. You know, What's with the beard? Are you old enough to grow a beard? You probably don't get the 5 o'clock shadow. You probably got to wait till like 8 o'clock. How do I reload on this damn thing? Who's your uh, Who's your choice to win this competition? The poor guy trying to get his... Can I try to interview him too? No? Oh, it's, it's, it's like a... It just action. automatically does it? Oh. Yeah, it's like a like. Oh. Yeah, kind of like... Why wouldn't dead. you tell me this? I, you're a video game master, man. I thought you knew this shit. I never played this one. This sucks. Yeah, it does I hate suck. this game. This game sucks. You know what? I hate this DS. Oh, no. Don't hurt my DS. What is this? Wrestlers like pink. What no. is this? No. Don't hurt me.